Endeavour Houston, we see a nominal Miko. Welcome to space. This is Boeing Starliner. It can dock to the International Space Station at one of the international docking adapters on the Space Station's Harmony module, also known as Node 2. Starliner uses a docking mechanism, called the NASA Docking System, which was developed in accordance with the International Docking System Standard, which is a freely available rulebook for building internationally compatible docking systems. The heritage of the NASA Docking System is a combination of American and Russian engineering over many decades, but that's a whole other story in itself. Here's how the NASA docking system actually works. We have the passive side of the system on the space station. This is divided into two subsystems, the soft capture system and the hard capture system. This is the soft capture system which you can see highlighted right now. The most prominent part of the soft capture system are these alignment petals. A crucial yet not so obvious part of the soft capture system are these things here. They are passive strikers used in the latching process that we'll see in due course. Around the soft capture system we have the hard capture system. The hard capture system has 12 pairs of latches, two fine alignment pins, two fine alignment pin holes, a power and data plug, and a power and data socket. Over on the approaching spacecraft, we have the active side of the NASA docking system. This is also split into the hard capture system and soft capture system. The soft capture ring on the active side is held by six electromechanical linear actuators, and it would be a crime for me to say electromechanical linear actuators without actually explaining what they are. An electromechanical linear actuator is essentially a threaded rod that can be extended and retracted using an electric motor that engages with the threaded rod via a threaded sleeve. By having the active soft capture ring mounted on these six linear actuators, we have the ability to vary the extended length of each actuator to move the soft capture ring with six degrees of freedom. This means we can move it in all three axes of rotation and all three axes of translation. On the active soft capture system, you'll see we don't have the passive strikers that the passive soft capture ring does. But on the rough alignment petals, we have these soft capture latches. The active hard capture ring on the spacecraft is quite similar to the passive hard capture ring on the space station. It's got two fine alignment pins, two fine alignment pin holes, 12 hard capture latches, a power and data plug, a power and data socket, but last and certainly not least, it has an elastomeric seal. That's the general anatomy of the NASA docking system, so now let's look at how it actually operates. Before docking, the system is checked out. The linear actuators of the active soft capture system are fully extended and retracted to make sure there are no mechanical issues. The actuators then position the soft capture ring in the ready to capture position. The approach to the docking port is made slowly and carefully. When contact occurs, the active soft capture system will perform what is called the lunge, where the actuators will push the active soft capture ring forward into the passive one. The electric current flowing to each actuator is limited in order to limit the force the actuators can exert. If an actuator reaches the maximum allowed force, the actuator is designed to slip while maintaining the maximum force. This way the active soft capture ring gets pushed in all the way flush engaging with the passive soft capture ring without simply just pushing off of it. If the lunge is successful in pushing the two soft capture rings together, the soft capture latches in the petals on the active side will extend and strike the passive strikers on the passive side that I pointed out earlier. The job of the active soft capture system now is to attenuate the relative motion between the two vehicles and align the active and passive hard capture systems. This is done by driving all six of the linear actuators to an equal length. 
Next, the actuators start retracting to bring the active and passive hard capture systems together. Once close enough together like this, the hard capture latches are driven closed in two groups of six. These two groups are made up of alternating pairs around the hard capture rings. Here's a close up cutaway look inside a hard capture latch pair. We can see one latch made up of an active and passive hook, and the other latch made up of an opposite active and passive hook. And they latch like so, pulling together, and importantly, compressing the elastomeric seal between the two sides of the docking system. With hard capture complete, the power and data plugs will push forward into their respective sockets. From this point, the area between the hatch on the spacecraft and the hatch on the space station, called the vestibule, needs to be pressurized. Once this is done and leak checks are performed, the hatchways can be opened up, and astronauts can move between the visiting spacecraft and the space station. Dockings to the ISS are really cool, and sort of underrated as something to watch since we tend to focus so much on launches and landings. If you haven't watched an ISS docking before, NASA streams them all live right here on YouTube. As always, be sure to check out the Space Shuttle's payload bay for more Simply Space content, and I'll catch you later.